everyone. Welcome to the um, Who Done It and Why Do We Care panel. We have just about 40 minutes to chat with you today, um, and we'll save some time at the end for questions if you have them. Uh, I'm your moderator today. I'm Karen M. McManus. I'm the author of the One of Us is Lying series, as well as Two Can Keep a Secret, and the Cousins, which is coming in December. And I'm joined by a really fantastic group of authors, so I'd like to have them all introduce themselves and their books. So, Minty, can we start with you? Yeah, hi, I'm Minty Doss, and my book is Brown Girl Ghosted, which is out now. Great. Um, and Stuart? Uh, um, I'm Stuart Gibbs. Uh, my newest book is, whoops, oh my gosh, hold on, Tyrannosaurus Rex. Uh, which is the uh, sixth book in the Fun Jungle Mystery series. And uh, I should also say I have a Spy School Revolution coming out in uh, October. So. Right. It, it fades into the background a little I, bit. I know. <laughs> I know. I know. I didn't. This is my first. I, I was going to pretend like I was just actually the only person at Y'all West now. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. But it's the background, people. Yeah, it goes away. So. Great. Um, and Stephanie. Um, I'm Stephanie Garber. I'm the author of Caraval series. Um, and I only have, I don't have the whole series yet, but the paperback finale, which is the last in the series, comes out in like a week. Great. Rory Power. Hi, I'm Rory. Uh, I wrote Wilder Girls, um, and it was just like Lord of the Flies, but with all girls and some gross stuff. And this summer I have, um, Burn Our Bodies Down coming out. Um, in July, which is same time. <laughs> <laughs> and Lilium. Hi, I'm Lilium Rivera, and um, I wrote uh, uh, Goldie Vance, The Hotel Who Done It, that came out in March. Great. All right, well, welcome everybody. I'm looking forward to talking with you about mysteries and thrillers. And that's actually the first thing I wanted to ask you guys because a lot of those terms are put together um, and I'm curious whether you consider yourself more like one or the other are you sometimes both um, when you're writing so let's start um, if we can kick off with Stuart oh, um, I think uh, primarily I, I do mysteries uh, you know I would think a mystery is definitely something where like a crime has been committed and everybody's mm -hmm. trying to figure out what happened but um, uh, but I, I, I have a new series, uh, Charlie Thorne, and that one is really, I think, more of a thriller that, that there's, there's not one big mystery somebody's trying to figure out the whole time. That, I don't know, thriller to me is like more like, is somebody going to get in trouble? Are they going to get caught? Are they running for their lives? That, that kind of thing. That's what I'm always curious about is like, you know, how do we define that difference? Because there's definitely a lot of overlap, right? But for you, it's sort of more, it's less about the solving or getting the answer and more about that that uh, protagonist sort of under duress, maybe. Right, right, yeah, I mean, I think you're right. Yeah, mystery is definitely like, you know, there's, there's, there's something in, in the whole point of the, of, the, of the book is figure out who did it and, and, and hopefully your, your readers are also, you know, wrapped up in trying to figure that out as well. Yeah, right. Stephanie, you're a fantasy author, of course, <laughs> but you write very suspen suspenseful books. Do you think you lean towards the more mysterious or the more thrilling when you, when you, add those elements um i you know it's so funny because yeah i do write fantasy so i was super excited to be on this panel because i've never had a panel like this um i would say it's probably more the mystery even though like you know who committed the murders in my books like it's not a mystery about that but it's more of like a mystery who's who like i you know there's usually like an identity mystery like in the first two books it's like who's legend you know who's pulling the strings, what's going on. Um, so I would definitely say more mystery fantasy, I guess. Yeah, 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 makes sense. Rory, how about you? Uh, I think I write both, um, but for me, the difference between them, the way I think about it is a mystery being about what happened and a thriller being about what's going to happen. Ooh, and so I like that. I, yeah, I it, for me, it just helps keep them <laughs> separate in my head, which I feel like I need. Um, and I think Wilder Girls, my first book, was definitely a thriller. But I think the more I write, the more I'm really interested in people looking back at something and trying to understand what happened. Because I also feel like that's what we do as adults writing YA. We're like, what, what happened? What was that? <laughs> yeah. 
Lillian, how about you? And you, of course, also write cross age categories. So is there a difference for you in your YA or in your middle grade? Um, I'm definitely, for this, it was a mystery. So I was all about the detective and the whodunit and how do we solve it. And that was really fun. But I, in general, I like um, to write action packs. So everything moves really quickly. And I'm really thinking about character, but also just plot. So for Goldie Vance, I was really thinking about how do I let get the readers to not put it down because they want to solve it as much as Goldie wants to solve the mystery. So that was what, what I was really thinking about when I was writing the book. Um, and it's been fun. It's my first mystery. I, I really loved it. Oh, is it your first one? Yeah. It's, uh, had you read a lot of mysteries before writing one? I, you know, I, I read Nancy Drew when I was a kid, <laughs> but I wasn't like a super hardcore mystery. I like watching it on TV. Yeah. So, <laughs> I, you know, so I'll watch Same. all those kind of like, you know, TV mysteries. I was hooked on those. And then for the this I was watching even <laughs> true crime yeah. Minty how about you mysteries and so I thought I had written a mystery but after I realized I wrote a thriller much more <laughs> you know I so mean what's the, what's the difference for you well actually I really like what Rory said I wish I had that I wish I had maybe heard that before I started writing it but um I was actually, I'm taking those master classes right now, and I took one uh, or with like Patterson and uh, David Baldacci and things, and like just hearing how they talk about thrillers, I was like, okay, because I like the constant action and the, the duress and just feeling like every, your whole world is going to blow up. Yeah. I think I concentrated more on that aspect than the whodunit. Yeah. It's interesting, yes. when I was actually querying One of Us is Lying, I called it a contemporary with mystery elements, which I think I made up. <laughs> I don't know if that's a thing, but I just didn't see myself as a mystery writer. Um, I, 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 I think, didn't I mean, know I, how to call myself that. I use the term mystery elements all the time because I, I think like every time you like end a chapter and you're like, oh, there's something, you know, like that I'm not gonna explain for like another three chapters. That's like <laughs> right. a little mystery that you're putting in there for someone to figure out. And that's kind of a good seg into my next question because I want to ask you guys about the second part of our title. You know, it's who done it, but it's also why do we care? Um, and so how do you guys draw people in, you know, your readers and how do you keep them flipping pages? What do you feel like are some of those secret ingredients for doing that? And Stephanie, can we start with you? Oh, sure. Um to say I love how you're really bringing the title of this into all the books. <laughs> so great. Committed to that. <laughs> I think, um, I, I hope this makes people care. I lie to my readers constantly. Like mm -hmm. almost all my characters are lying about something. Like I really just, most of Same. them are lying. <laughs> like, um, so I try to like, hopefully I'm drawing in my readers by them knowing that they're not being told the whole story. That somebody's you know, somebody's lying, there are secrets to be revealed, nothing is as it seems. So like, I like to kind of tell a story that um, has a lot of lies, has a lot of missing pieces in the hopes that they'll keep reading knowing like, oh, we're going to find answers to this. So I just kind of throw a lot of lies and questions at my readers, um, hoping that like, you know, it's the kind of story where it's like, if you flip to the last page, maybe you'll get one answer, but you're not going to get all the answers. So you have to, you have to read. Till the very end. That's how I do it. Great. Rory, how about you? Uh, I think I definitely a lot of lying. And for all of us, I think that's true. I think I like most of us is lying as the third book in your series, Karen. Just consider that for a title. Um, <laughs> most of us are lying. Um, yeah, I think it really comes down to character and to making the, the mystery or the secret that's going to be revealed really relevant to like the particular identity of your main character so that like if they don't find out their whole world is going to change and if they do find out their whole world is going to change yeah. but that really mattering to this one person I think is really key yeah absolutely Lillian how about you well I mean because it's middle grade I'm not really lying that much <laughs> I wish I could lie more but no why I can't write middle grade <laughs> yeah so Goldie Vance is not not that she's very super positive 
and all her friends are very like, let's go get it, you know, let's do it, let's find, you know, solve the mystery. And she's a, you know, her friends and family are cheerleader, cheerleaders in that way. I love that about her. Um, so to me, because I use usually write young adult, every teenage angst, and everyone's lying, right? Um, it was really refreshing <laughs> to nice not change, live in right? that kind of super. Yeah, very positive. I was just like, oh, this is, you know, this is awesome. Like Goldie Vance, she's going to solve the mystery. I'm really excited for her. <laughs> so yeah, it's a totally different, different like lifestyle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I bet. So yeah, so it's different. It's different. <laughs> cool. Minty, how about you? When Brown Girl ghosted, she's dead and she has to solve the mystery so that she won't be permanently dead. So I think by That's creating main so character. Yeah, and so I think like maybe writing a main character that people don't want to die, like so <laughs> that was the way to keep them hooked. And then just as much of a cliffhanger as I could put at the end of chapters was always, you know, kind of a little trick too. That's one of my favorite things too. You know, I really want people to get to the end of the chapter and think, well, I can't stop here. You know, that I feel like I've done my job. Right. That feeling of like staying up too late to read. Yeah, exactly. Stuart, how about you? Uh, yeah, I mean, well, I, I'll talk about, yeah, the, the, you, you really want the, the, the end of the chapter to be the last place anybody should stop reading. And, right. and But I, I did, you were talking about, did I read, or did, did Lillian read uh, other, and I read, I read so many mysteries when I was growing up. And then when, when I first started to write uh, middle grade, um, there was a series called Harry Potter that was doing pretty well, and I don't know if all the readers have heard of it. It's 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 out there. You can find it. Uh, <laughs> uh, and uh, but it's really, if you think about it, it's really a mystery series, and yeah. and uh, the, Harry's always solving something. So I went back and I I um, I reread some of the books, and I and uh, and I realized J.K. Rowling like was just a great mystery constructor, and and she had all these tricks. And like one of the tricks is every time somebody's about to tell Harry Potter something oh. important something comes up and they have to leave and Harry can never find them again for like four months. And I was like, that's great. That's what I'm going to do repeatedly is just every time you, you think you're about to find something out, something else happens. And then, you know, either the chapter ends or, or it's an emergency and now you have to, you know, you, and uh, you have to go deal with that. And then, um, so that you, you just keep almost telling them something and then not, and then, and, and just keep doing that repeatedly throughout the book so that uh, eventually they start to get all the information, but they might not realize they got the information that they needed at the right time. So. That's a really good point. She does do that. Yeah. That's one of the things I like about writing multi point of view also is that you can sort of naturally do that. You know, you right. can take people to the end of someone's section and then, oh, sorry, we're going to the next person. You're not going to find out that thing you really wanted to find out. Do my other multi POV writers use this too? Rory never. <laughs> I write single, mo mostly single point of view. And I love that because you just pick the person who knows the least. And then they don't know anything and you don't have to worry about like hiding anything. They just have no idea. So it's perfect. <laughs> I don't know how you guys do multiple. I think it's so cool. <laughs> you had some in Wilder Girls though, right? Well. <laughs> cool. So talk to me about like how you guys plot. Because obviously we write books that, you know, they're, they're plot heavy. Lots of things need to happen before the end for it to all make sense. There needs to be things like clues. There needs to be things like, you know, red herrings occasionally. Are you guys outliners? Do you have like the murder board with the red string everywhere? Or do, are you just like winging it? So Rory, let's start with you. I used to think I was a really big outliner. Like I would have said that I was an outliner, but I'm not. I'm tragically um, pretty unplanned, which means I write through it once and then I go, oh, that's what it's about. And then I start over and then we do it all again. Um, I feel like I should learn to be better at it, but this is just how it happens. <laughs> well, you know, if the books turn out well, then that's your process. <laughs> Sometimes it's painful, but it works always painful. <laughs> <laughs> Lillian, how about you? Um, well, because Goldie Vance is based off of the comic books by Hope Larson and Brittany Williams, I really had to outline. You know, I was asked to write this middle grade, and so it was sort of introducing it to new readers, um, which is great. 
but um, I also had to, yeah, I was, it was heavily outlined and um, they, they were great because they, they let me create the story and what the mystery was going to be and, and introduce new characters. So all of that was awesome. But this was the first time that I was like, oh, I have to really actually figure out the red herrings and the clues and all day before. And like um, Rory said, you know, I usually just write and then I go back. But this time I had to just really concentrate in writing a really strong draft, I would say. Did you find that went faster or was it, did it take you more time because you had to do all that upfront work or was it kind of a wash? No, uh, faster, no. <laughs> just, saying, just as painful as anything, but at, but at least, you know, I had something to hold up against. I had a framework, yeah. I would say. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Mincy, how about you? Plotter, pantser, in between? Yeah, um, maybe in between, outliner for sure. Um, I like the murder board. I think that's super fun. <laughs> and I mean, I like to get the different colored, like sticky notes and all that kind of stuff. So I, I really, and I, I need to do that for the visualization. For the next book, I've just started writing. It's, um, it's an old school murder mystery in the 90s. So I find that I'm doing a ton of outlining and clues and red herrings and just like really laying that all out there more than I ever have. And so fingers crossed, we'll see if it sucks or not. But I mean, <laughs> I, I'm actually kind of digging the process of getting really like nerdy in it. You need to like post a screenshot of your mur murder board. We would like to see that. <laughs> Um, it's in a room that no one's going to see. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, maybe not. <laughs> Stuart, how about you? Uh, I'm, I'm a huge out. In fact, I, I, I have an outline. Uh, whoops, now this is going. <laughs> I'm going to go away. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop pretending like I'm somewhere else. Hold on. I'll, I'll go back. To, this, is, this is my actual. Uh, so so this, is, this is like pages of outline here that... that uh, it changes a lot as I go. Uh, so I, I, I basically come up with a crime I want and then figure out uh, how the crime is going to be committed and then work backwards and try and figure out all the clues I need and then, uh, so you, and then almost work forwards again to figure out like how I'm going to put all the red herrings in and figure out where all the, all the clues go. Uh, so uh, I, I, but I, I do think, uh, that, you know, I, I think that, that the, the plotting doesn't rule out pantsing. Uh, that, that sometimes you can be struck by inspiration and say like, "Oh, okay, this this will be great," and and I didn't know it was going to go here, and that's still fun. But I, I I would have a really hard time writing a mystery that I did not really know where it was going at the end. Yeah, yeah. I've only once didn't know where mine was going, and that was the book I had to write three times. So Same. for me personally, I do not recommend that approach. <laughs> Stephanie, how about you? Okay, so I I think I'm like a multiverse plotter, <laughs> which I don't think I recommend this theory because um, it's I think I waste a lot of time. But like my biggest thing when I'm reading and even when I'm writing is I like to be surprised, but I also feel like I have to know where I'm going or I will go off the rails with my writing. So like I will plot all my major points out and then it's like, they look kind of like a constellation. So it's like, they will get to this place and then they could do this and then this could happen or this could happen or this could be the secrets that's revealed or maybe this is the person's secret or this is the person's secret. So like, when I come up with a character, I will give them like five potential secrets and I won't know what it is. And when I come up with like a bad situation, it's like very choose your own adventure. They could do this and then they'll all die or they could do this. And so like, I don't actually know what happens until I get to the scenes but I know the possibilities. And <laughs> so it's like very like, I will come up with every idea because I'm just like also a very bad decision maker. So it's like, this, this is everything that could happen. Um, and then I narrow it down as I'm writing. And then sometimes it's like, I have to rewrite because I maybe took the wrong path and everybody did die. But um, yeah. So it's so not it's like, like choose not, your own adventure. <laughs> yes, yes. So it's like very like lots of index cards and sticky notes for like, multi it's a very multiverse. That's kind of how I see it. That's interesting. I can see that with your books too, because they do feel like, you know, there's so many possibilities in that world. Too many possibilities. <laughs> <laughs> 
Very cool. Um, so I want to ask you guys about characters and specifically writing, you know, young people who are in these situations that are, you know, definitely mysterious um, and maybe sometimes dangerous, depending on what age category you're writing. Um, you know, kids have obviously different skill sets um, and different things that they can do to solve a mystery than adults do. So I'm wondering how you guys, you know, kind of like work with that work with the strengths and some of the challenges that come with younger protagonists. Um, so Lilium, can we start with you? Sure. Um, so for middle grade, it, I was super aware of not being able to curse. <laughs> <laughs> not, um, there was no kissing. You know, I was just really aware of how she's young, but she's not naive, yeah. you know? And, um, and it's also set in the late 1950s. So it's a very, um, in a lot of ways, 1950s. So, you know, she's, she's amazing in so many ways because she's, she's a feminist, be, you know, er, like early on during that time. She's, you know, most people wouldn't have her solving any kind of mysteries at all. Um, but she's also gay and she's biracial. And all those things are amazing, you know? So I had to really be aware of, not putting in my social kind of justice stuff in there because the and the bottom line she's about solving the mystery mm -hmm. and that to me is very empowering and she's you know and she'll do whatever she has to do um in spite of so I was you know it was a very it was different for me to write and compared yeah. to like all the other young adult books that I've written you know so it was a challenge but I really had a good like I had a ball writing it it was like because she like I said, it was very empowering about her because she would just do whatever she could, you know, in spite of men telling her she couldn't. Right, know? right. And adults too, right? Like at that yeah. age, you don't always have the respect that you know what you're doing, so. Right, and she, you know, she's like, okay, you're going to talk to me like that? That's fine. I'm going to go around you. <laughs> and I'm going to figure it out anyway. So yeah, it was really great. <laughs> that sounds great. Minty, how about you? I lit. I relate with her so much and she's 16 and so um, like her whole arc is about her getting her confidence and finding her voice and her power so I thought that was just really fun to play with actually because um, at first she's kind of she kind of sucks you know it's like why wouldn't you do this why wouldn't you help the world if you could so I, I liked kind of playing with that bratty element which was actually fear and then um, having her kind of like just slowly evolve and with that like the mystery sped up as well yeah. And, yeah yeah so her coming of age kind of helped accelerate her getting to the answers she needed right with that idea of she kind of always knew these things but she just was too afraid yeah. to assert them yeah or tap into them yeah yeah great Stuart how about you uh, well, I think uh, primarily uh, my uh, my characters all have to be really smart. And that's that's like the great thing about writing a mystery is it's a story where the smartest person wins, uh, and and uh, and sadly I think uh, being smart is not uh, often uh, put up on the pedestal it should be in this country or any country as much as it should be. Uh, so uh, I think a lot of time when kids are reading books, they're they're they tend to be you know they're reading so they're smart kids and they want to see somebody like them uh, succeeding. Uh, but, you know, and when you're writing a kid, there's certain things, there's a lot of things kids can't do that adults can do. Like, they, you know, if you, you can't just um, go anywhere that you want, uh, you know, because people will be like, why is that kid walking around without their parent? But sometimes there are things that you can get away with as a kid that you can't get away with as an adult. So you sort of look for uh, places to play to those strengths. So they're, you know, like uh, kids can fall in with school groups really easily and sort of uh, get in uh, those places. Uh, or, you know, a kid can go up to the uh, front desk at a hotel and say, I've been locked out of my room. Can you give me a key to this room? Uh, and, and start crying and, uh, <laughs> you know, say like, I really need to do this. And then they go, okay, okay, here's the key to your room. Uh, and and uh, so there are certain times that uh, there are things that it, a smart kid can figure out how to do that, that uh, you know, they have an advantage. They've occasionally, they have disadvantages that adults uh, don't have, but they occasionally can have an advantage that adults have. Right. They, they can use their kidness to... Yes. Uh, <laughs> I love that. Um, Stephanie, how about you? I, so I play around with like 
fear a lot. Um, my, like, in the Caraval series, there are two sisters, and they're my main protagonists. And one is very fearful because she believes everything she's been taught before. Like, she has this horrible father who's kind of like, because she's a female, like, you know, in this world, and like she she can't take care of herself you know she's kind of grown up with this like very oppressive belief and so she's never experienced anything that's like shown her otherwise so like that fear really holds her back um for the first like you know for a lot of the first book um but then her sister is the opposite where it's like she's been taught the same things but she's not afraid as a result and she's also never like experienced enough life to like have consequences for her actions. So it's like, you know, the kind of thing where it's like, you know, if someone asks you, are you going to jump off, a, you know, if all your friends jumped off a bridge, would you do it? And it's like, not again. Like, that's, <laughs> you know, who she kind of becomes where it's like, she'll do it the first time. But like, so she hasn't had these experiences and she's not afraid. So it's like with these two sisters, it's like, cause I feel like when I was younger, like I'm way more fearful, fearful adult. <laughs> Because of the things I did when I was younger, because I was like, oh, sure, I'll try this. Oh, sure, why not? <laughs> um, and so I felt like there was that freedom. So one of the characters is definitely like freer like that. And then the other, it's like a very big dismantling of her beliefs. Um, and so she starts out fearful and it holds her back from like uncovering things. And then she learns that everything, you know, she's been taught isn't true and she's more powerful than she of her belief so right so you get those dual personalities and siblings yeah. which i love yeah rory how about you i agree with what stephanie said about how i think there's a certain kind of teenager who is like the perfect person to be writing about for a mystery because if you need someone who's going to just walk into a dangerous situation like a 17 year old is perfect <laughs> um <laughs> so i think that really helps but there are definitely disadvantages with like what a teenager can do. So my solution is always just to get rid of the adults entirely. Um, <laughs> there are, I think, two adults that, in yeah. my debut and they don't really uh, feature. And in the other books that I'm working on, yeah, we just um, got rid of them. Like, just don't <laughs> worry about it, it's fine. <laughs> very, very minimal adult supervision. Right, like, <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> yeah. I, I do that too sometimes, you know, there's they're busy. Like parents they have who are absent for some reason or another, and sometimes physically they're absent, but other times it might be work or mm -hmm. travel. Sometimes it's very useful to just have them be out of town. Everybody just has so many business trips, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of characters, I am wondering if you guys had to pick like one of your characters to be quarantined with, who would it be? So Minty, let's start with you. I don't know uh, my nanny. Uh, yeah, the nanny in the book is my nanny. I didn't even change her. I, I didn't even change her name. I mean, because my nanny um, has died now, but she's kick-ass, and she was kick-ass, and she always had, like, great stories and this awesome laugh. So, yeah, she would be so fun right now, and um, she would give you really good head massages. <laughs> <laughs> that is vital in a quarantine partner. <laughs> yes, exactly. Stuart, how about you? Um, you know, I created this new character, Charlie Thorne, who, who is, is a girl and she's the smartest, she's pretty much the smartest person on earth. Uh, and, and I feel like she would be great because uh, uh, she would be coming up with lots of great stuff to do. And she possibly would have a vaccine already for all of us. <laughs> I think we would all like to have her as our quarantine partner. <laughs> uh, Stephanie, how about you? I would probably go with Scarlett, who's the main character um, in Caraval, because she's the most like me. She's the rule follower and like the most rule follower out of all my characters. So <laughs> I think any of my other characters, quarantine would be a lot harder for them. Um, but I think Scarlett would be good just like playing board games, doing puzzles, reading books, all the things that like I <laughs> like to do. <laughs> and she would follow all the rules, which is also like me. <laughs> so, it would be so um, comforting, right? <laughs> yeah, I think any of the other characters would be breaking the rules, would be like trying to like go off and I don't know, assassinate politicians or whatever. And um, it would I, it'd be very stressful for me. <laughs> Rory, how about you? Uh, <laughs> uh, well, all of the characters in my debut are in a quarantine. Um, I'll be in 
much more exaggerated circumstances than we are. So really, I think I'd be good with any of them. Like, yeah, yeah, you kind of like good. this already. <laughs> they're equipped. I, anyone can come over. They know how to like hunt and gather and I'll just sit here and like charge my laptop. <laughs> We'd be a good pair. They have skills. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Lillian, how about you? Oh man, that's easy because it'll be, it'll be Goldie Vance because she would have figured out how to find the toilet paper, like the store that has the toilet paper. And she would have figured out how to do it. And she would get our mask and everything. And um, she's just way more on top of it. Whereas I just want to, I don't know, live on Twitter and not, <laughs> and not face the reality of what we're dealing with. <laughs> so, yeah. so she can take care of like the logistics of life and you can take care of the social media. That's yes. like a fair balance. <laughs> I mean, I don't see why not. <laughs> I think personally, I would probably pick um, Nate McCauley because I just feel like he's been social distancing his whole life and <laughs> he would be a natural at it. So we have a lot of questions here and we are like eight minutes from the end. So I'm going to start grabbing some of those. Um, and for this, maybe you guys could kind of like just call out if you have an answer. Um, so actually, Stuart, you already answered this, but I'm curious for other people, do you work backwards in plotting your stories? Did you guys start knowing the end and take it from there? Yeah, yeah, exactly that way. And just as Stuart was saying, working backwards and then working forwards with the red herrings, the red herrings and the clues and all those kind of things, yeah. I generally, I, oh. No, go ahead, go. <laughs> I generally have like an image that I know, like I can see people like standing somewhere, but I don't know what they're doing. So if that counts as working backwards, then yes, but I feel like it doesn't because I don't know anything, so. <laughs> I love, I mean, I have the same thing. I have an image in my head, but I have to know what the end is like. Like I know that if I start with all my projects, I have to know what the end. Other anyone else? Oh, I sorry, my sound was like we can That's all. Okay. Um, I won't know like exactly what happens, but I'll know what kind of ending. Like if I'm going for like a happily ever after, or tragic, or betrayal, or like. So I'll know like what type of ending, but not like the actual events. Cause I want to write with like the same tone so that I'm not like throwing people off. Like, I thought this was going to be a romantic happily ever after. And so I like to know like what type, but not the actual events. Cause usually I can't, I'm, I can't figure out like the actual last act until I'm in it. Yeah. Yeah. This is an interesting question. Um, what is the very first question you ask yourselves when you're writing a mystery? Uh, I, I think when you, when you come up with a crime, you, you're trying to figure out, well, who would want to commit that crime and why would they want to do it? And then you actually have to figure out how, but it's, but it's really like trying to figure out like who the person is like, you know, because most most of us are not criminals i think uh but you have to put yourself in the mind of one and say like well you know why would someone want to do this for me i think about setting first my question is always where i am because uh, what i write tends to be speculative in a way but also grounded in reality i have to figure out a place where what i want to happen can happen and where <laughs> Like, there won't be people who can, from the outside world, so to speak, who can, like, see what's happening. I need it to be pretty isolated. Um, so that's always the biggest and hardest question. And once I have that, usually everything else clicks in place. I usually start with characters, you know, and I think, like, why would something happen to this person? You know, like, what's their either who are they or what did they do or what, you know, kind of secret are they keeping that might be about to get out and what do they need to kind of like figure out about themselves in order to fix or solve or just address whatever challenge they are facing. Another question. Um, what advice do you guys have for aspiring authors? I, 
I think my favorite advice that um, is to finish the book you're writing. Like a lot of, like, I think you can't figure out how to like revise and do a lot of the steps until you finish that book. So like even like just push through and finish it. Like, don't worry about publication. Don't worry about this. Like if you haven't written a whole book, like I, I would say the starting point is to write that whole book. Um, and then you can figure out the questions of how to write a book after you've kind of written it and you can figure out the publication process. But I think if you learn too much before you've written that whole book, um, you, you're going to weigh yourself down and you're not going to really know yourself as a writer until you've written a whole book. So like, I would start with writing, finishing your story, write the whole thing. Just do it. I, and I'll build off what Stephanie says, because I think a lot of the time, uh, kids, um, I get a lot of stuff from kids and they're like, you know, I, I've got this idea, but I don't know what to call it. I don't, you know, I, and you're like, like the title is the last thing you need. That's the last thing we ever write. Um, you know, and, and I think a lot of the time young writers get wrapped up in the idea that, that like writing a book is really sequential and that if you don't have the perfect first sentence, you can't write the second sentence. And if that's not perfect, you can't write the third sentence. And you're like, no, just get, get something down because so much of this is in the editing. It's coming back in and, and it, in a sense, like the hardest part is to, is, to, is to have it all on paper. And then when you have it, you can look at it and say, oh, I can move this around. I should have started this here. I should have done this. This would work out better this way. And you, you can fix it, right? So your first draft is not your finished draft. It's, it's, uh, it's just a starting point. And um, I would like to just add that, just um, dedicate time to your art, your passion. So whatever that is, it's just even thinking about it or writing a couple of sentences, just do something every day towards your art because um, that's important. I think that's key. Say like, um, accept that it might suck. It, it, I mean, it's really okay if it sucks. I mean, you will get better. Sure, it I doesn't think, have to know. win the Pulitzer right away. Yeah, I had no idea when I started how many drafts a book goes through. Um, you know, so I think it can be intimidating sometimes for a younger writer to put something on paper and think, well, this isn't, this doesn't match what's in my head. Um, but that's exactly right. And it doesn't have to, you know, that's why you have revisions, and you have critique partners, and eventually you have an agent and an editor and everybody polishes, helps you polish that story till it is much closer to what's in your head. Exactly, exactly. I mean, I was, I, I was sitting there talking to my therapist because I was so afraid to write. And I, I realized I was comparing myself to like some of the greatest writers in the world, you know, ever in time. And she's like, well, not everyone can be Shakespeare. <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, you're right. <laughs> Should they be? Okay, I think we are like almost at our end here. Any last words you guys wanted to mention or things we didn't touch upon that you'd like to say to the audience before we head out? Thank you for coming. <laughs> thank yeah, you for watching. Really, thank you. <laughs> and thank you, Karen, for moderating. And yes. thank you guys. You're an awesome <laughs> group of experts. It was really fun to talk to you. And um, thanks to everyone who is online and listening. I'm sorry we could only get to a few questions, but I hope you guys had a good time. <laughs>